Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. We've got our first March of the Machine, the Aftermath Epilogue Booster Box here to crack open today. It's fully sealed and intact. Um, there's only 24 packs with six cards a piece, so this should go pretty quick. Um, but what I wanted to do was kind of show you from a size comparison uh, how this box compares to a collector booster box, which of course is the smallest of the boxes. Uh, they're nearly the same height, uh, width, and depth. Um, there's 144 cards in here, whereas a collector booster box is 180. So let's crack this thing open. Let's see how bad the duplication is. Uh, the set is only 50 cards, uh, and there are four different frames. However, in here, we can only see uh, the regular frame and the showcase cards. Um, so we start off with a little mini poster. That's kind of nice. And then our mini packs. Uh, look how thin these things are. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pull them out. Uh, they even had to put like a little special divider in here. Pop that back down. All right, and uh, let's just uh, crack these things open. I don't think there's a pull tab, so uh, let's just get going. Um, all right, so this one starts off with an Animus Might, followed by a Death Rattle Ani. Then we're going to see ourselves a Training Grounds as our rare, very nice, with a Foil Animus Might. And then we're going to see a Showcase Gold Forge Thopterex with a Teferi's Talent in the back. All right, so that's going to be one of those uh, commander tokens. Very cool. So I don't believe there's any special tokens for this set. They're all either March of the Machine or col or the uh, commander tokens. So we've got a Feast of Victorious Dead, followed by a Harness Snubborn. And then we're going to see the land from the cycle. Uh, we've got a Dranith Ruins coming in as our rare with a foil Tolarian Contempt. Looks like some smudging on the bottom there with the foil. Could just be dust. Uh, and then we're going to see a Death Rattle Ani with a non-token token. So we didn't even get a token that time. All right. So this one starts off with a filter out. Then we're going to see a Reckless Handling. Then we've got a Spark Rupture coming in as our rare. Followed by a Gold Forge Thopterix. And then we're going to see an Ayara's Oathsworn coming in a showcase rare. So a double rare pack with an elemental token. So that's going to be one of the Multiverse Legends tokens. All right. This one has a blot out to kick us off with a Gold Forge Thopterix. And then we're going to see Nissa Resurgent Animus coming in uh, in uh, regular frame. Very cool. As a mythic. Then we get a Death Rattle Ani. Followed by a Training Grounds Foil in Showcase. That is very nice. All right. And then we're going to see an Incubator with a Phyrexian in the back. So there's been, you know, I think some negativity towards this set. And somewhat rightfully so. Uh, there's only 50 cards in the set, so the duplication is high. However, there's only 50 cards in the set. So you don't have to buy too many boxes to kind of either complete the set or get the cards that you're looking for. So just kind of keep that in mind. So we've got ourselves an Undercity Upheaval, followed by a Campus Renovation. Then we're going to see an Urborg Scavengers as our rare, with a Reckless Handling as our foil. And then we are going to see Karn Legacy Reforged in Retro Frame. Very nice to see that inside of one of these boxes. Very cool. That's going to hold some value for us for sure. And then we got an Elemental Token in the back. Uh, so as I was saying, these boxes are roughly around uh, somewhere between $66 and $70, depending upon where you buy them. I'm sure there are places that are higher and places that are lower, uh, but it comes out to be around less than $0.50 cents per card. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, so we've got a Markov Baron, Copper Coat Vanguard, followed by Nahiri's Resolve, and we're going to see an Open the Way Foil Rare with an Undercity Upheaval and then a Zombie Token at the back. So I wonder if you can get three rares, so like a main set rare, a foil rare, and then a showcase rare in one of these packs. i got to imagine it's possible, just highly unlikely. Uh, so we got a Talarian Contempt, followed by a Culligan Warmonger. Then we're going to see a Rebuild the City, followed by a Cosmic Rebirth. Then we've got a Feast of Victorious Deed, or Dead, coming in. Uh, and then we get an Incubator Phyrexian in the back. 
So if you're looking to save a few bucks on these, you can head over to trollandtoad.com, use my code MTGBOX5, um, and get yourself 5% off any March of the Machine Aftermath product. Um, in fact, uh, I believe they're going for $69.95 over at Troll and Toad, but if you use my code, you can actually get them for less than TCG Market Price. So just kind of head on over there. All right, we got a Death Rattle Ani. We've got a Cosmic Rebirth, followed by Sarkon, Soul of Flame, Mythic coming in with a Blot Out in Foil. And then we're going to see a Cosmic Rebirth Friend Showcase with a Warrior Token in the back. Alright, we got our, uh, I think it's our first official duplicate here. We got an Animus Might in regular frame. Uh, we got a Feast of Victorious De Dead, a Leyline Immersion with a Copper Coat Vanguard, a Culligan Warmonger, and a Knight Token. So I count duplication not just card name, but name, frame, and foiling. Um, you know, just to kind of keep it fair and make sure, you know, we're, we're actually comparing an apple to an apple. So now we're really seeing some duplication. We've got a Death Rattle Ani, another Feast of Victoria's Dead, a Draneth, a uh, New Benalia's Light, followed by a Foil Training Grounds. Very cool. And then we got a Feast of Victoria's Dead with a Spirit Token in the back. So now I think we've got three Training Grounds. We've got Regular Frame, we've got Regular Frame Foil, and then we got a Showcase uh, Foil as well. So maybe we can get Showcase Non-Foil. So we got a Harnessed a Snubborn with a Filter Out. We're going to see Plarg and Nasari with an Animus Might in Foil, a Talarian Contempt in Foil, and another Non-Token Token. So I believe these are going to be the Japanese printed cards. They're extremely smooth. Um, and easy to open. So we got a Harness Snubborn with a filter out. And then we're going to see Sagarda, Font of Blessings, Undercity Upheaval, followed by a Markov Baron and Showcase, and a Phyrexian Hydra. All right, we got ourselves the Reckless Handling, followed by the Gold Forge Thopterix, and Arnie Metal Brow with an Obnixilis Captive Kingpin uh, coming in in foil. Very nice. That card is currently, uh, I think, one of the most valuable in the set. Then we got ourselves a Filter Out and an Incubator. So I'm not quite tracking the Mythics as I'm opening these. I uh, just pulled out two so far, but I know this is also a Mythic, and I think we had one other as well. Uh, but that'll all be covered in the MTG box analysis. So we got a Blot Out, an Undercity Upheaval with a Deification, followed by a filter out, and then we're going to see uh, Jarena, Dauntless General, coming in in the showcase. Very nice. Followed by another non-token token. So I'll take just one second, slide all these piles up so we can actually have some true piles. All right, we got ourselves a Markov Baron. With a Talarian Contempt, uh, Jahira Dauntless General with a Copper Coat Vanguard, and then we're going to see the Kennerith's Royal Funeral. Very nice in showcase. Love that Aldrin uh, frame. Then we get ourselves a Treasure in the back. All right, Culligan Warmonger to kick this one off with a Cosmic Rebirth. And we're going to see a Vesuvian Drifter as our rare with an Undercity Upheaval in foil and then a Death Rattle Oni in showcase with an Elemental. I did personally pick up a few of these boxes for myself. I think I have three in total plus a couple of the bundles. So lots of epilogue boosters to come. Um, we've got a Death Rattle Oni and Animus Might with a Samut uh, Vizier Nantukamun. Alrighty, uh, that's a mythic. We got ourselves a blot out with an Undercity Upheaval in Showcase. And then we've got ourselves a Spirit Token in the back. I can't recall if I have any collector boxes on order, but after watching um, kind of them get spoiled super early, I wasn't terribly interested in this set. 
Uh, so uh, I'm not going all in on this one. Um, so we've got a Feast of Victoria's Dead, followed by Hunter Snubburn with Jorel, Voice of Zalfir. And then we're going to see Niv Mizzet Supreme coming in in foil, followed by a Death Rattle Ani and a Thopter token in the back. All right, we kick this one off with a filter out, a blot out, open the way with a filter out in foil, and then a cosmic rebirth in showcase with the incubator Phyrexian token in the back. Whoop. They're easy to open, hard to hold on to because they're just so thin. All right, we've got ourselves a reckless handling here with a gold forged Thopteryx. We're going to see Tarvar the Bellicose coming in as a mythic with a campus renovation in foil and then a Culligan Warmonger in showcase with the Incubator Phyrexian. Looks like we've got about four packs to go. 24 cards to see. All right, we got the Undercity Upheaval followed by the campus renovation. Then Tazari Stalwart Survivor coming in as our rare with a Culligan Warmonger. And a Markov Baron in showcase with the Phyrexian Sapperly in the back. So still haven't seen a triple rare pack. I don't know what the odds are. It's got to be pretty, uh, pretty high or pretty low, I guess. Copper Vanguard. Markov Baron with an Iara's Oath Sworn as our main set rare. Followed by a Markov Baron in foil. And then a filter out and showcase with a Knight token. This one's got a Talarian Contempt with a Culligan Warmonger. We're going to see Nashi Moon's Legacy coming in as our rare with a Feast of Victorious Dead and a Nahiri's Resolve. We almost did it that time. All right, so make sure you stay tuned for the MTG box analysis where I'll cover all of the metrics for this box. So we got ourselves a Cosmic Rebirth, an Animus Might, the Kenrith's Royal Funeral uh, from the main set with a Harness Snubburn. And we're going to see a Copper Coat Vanguard with an Incubator Phyrexian in the back. So I'll be back in just a minute with the MTG Box Analysis. In today's MTG Box Analysis, we'll be comparing the cards that we saw in this box to the cards that we were eligible to obtain inside of an Epilogue Booster Pack. Then we'll examine the non-foil and foil coverage of the set, along with coverage by rarity and duplication. Then we'll review the current set value and break down the actual observed value for the box and conclude with a summary. If you want to go deeper into the analysis and see all of the metrics for this box and more than 100 others, simply join the channel at the Give Me the Data level. Let's get things going by reviewing the contents of the box in comparison to the cards that we were eligible to see. Using this chart, we can see the foils that we observed in orange, the non-foils in green, and the cards from the set that we were eligible to see in gray as the baseline. In the non-foil space, we saw between 8 and 12 cards for each of the primary colors of Magic, plus 23 multicolor cards. We also saw 19 showcase cards and one retro frame in non-foil. In the foil space, we saw between 2 and 5 cards for each of the primary colors of Magic, plus 4 foil showcase cards. Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, we saw 53 unique cards out of a possible 100, giving us 53% coverage of the set. We saw 100% of the non-foil standard frame cards for blue, black, and red inside of this box. In the foil space, we saw 23 unique cards out of a possible 100, giving us 23% coverage. This time around, we didn't see 100% of anything, but we did see 75% of the blue cards in standard frame. Pivoting the coverage by rarity, the Aftermath set does not contain any commons, just uncommons, rares, and mythics. In today's box, we saw 80% of the uncommons in non-foil, along with 24 rares for 48% coverage and 5 mythics for 25% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 60% of the uncommons, along with 4 foil rares for 8% coverage and a single mythic good enough for 5% coverage. In total, we saw 28 rares and 6 mythics in these 24 packs. And here's a look at the true duplication inside of today's box. Despite the set only having 50 cards and us opening 120 total cards, only 26 of the cards were duplicated 44 times for a box duplication rate of 37%. This isn't nearly as high as I thought it would be. 
Before we take a look at the value in today's Epilogue Booster Box, let's review the value of the cards that we could have pulled. This chart shows all 100 cards from the Aftermath set that you can pull from an Epilogue Booster using non-foil market prices as of May 15th, 2023. Currently, the set features six cards valued over $10. The top five are going to be the Tyvar of the Bellicose, valued at $11.62. Nissa Resurgent Animus, valued at $16.06. Obnixilis, Captive Kingpin, valued at $16.29. Then we have Nissa in Retroframe, valued at $25.89. And the Retroframe Karn Legacy Reforged, valued at $28.59. The set also features 10 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 25 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 59 cards are currently valued under $1. If you were to add up the non-foil market prices of all 50 standard frame and 50 showcase cards in non-foil, you'd be looking at a grand total market value of $263.71. And now let's review the actual value that we saw in today's box starting off with the non-foils. I'd say we did pretty darn good seeing two of the six cards valued over $10, including the standard frame Nissa Resurgent Animus valued at $16.06, and the retro frame Karn Legacy Reforged, the most valuable card in the set, valued at $28.59. We also saw three cards valued between $5 and $10, and six cards valued between $1 and $5. The other 81 non-foils that we pulled are valued less than a dollar. In the foil space, I'd say we did pretty good as well. We saw one card valued over $10, and it was the standard frame Obnixilis Captive Kingpin valued at $10.68. We also picked up two cards valued between $5 and $10. The other 25 foils in the box were valued less than a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box from Amazon during pre-order for $76.99. The current market price for these boxes as of May 15th, 2023 is $65.89. Today's Epilogue Booster Box contained 24 packs, each with five cards, allowing us to see 120 cards plus 24 tokens. The 21 tokens that we saw are currently valued at $3.97. The 86 uncommons are currently valued at $20.32. The 28 rares have a current market value of $40.03, and the 6 mythics are valued at $68.34. Here are the same values broken down by non-foil and foil. The 92 non-foil cards produced $86.57 in market value, whereas the 28 foils produced $32.17 in value. Either way you add it up, the grand total for this box comes up to be $132.66 in current market value, which makes this box a gain of $55.67 and a return of 172% of my purchase price in card value. Now for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 10 cards valued over two bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $91.98, which means that those 10 cards represent 69% of the total box value and currently are paying for my box. Now, do keep in mind that it is release week, and as more and more of these get open and more and more singles hit the market, prices will go down. So while this box looks good on paper today, it may not in a few weeks. Be sure to come back to the channel on Friday when I'm going to be doing a collaboration with Pure MTG on a box of Flesh and Blood Monarch. Thank you so much for watching. I want to take a moment to give a special shout out to all of the channel members. Your support helps fund this operation and allows me to create the content that you all enjoy. If you're not yet a channel member, I invite you to consider becoming one. By joining, you'll gain early access to videos and many other perks. If you're interested in supporting the channel but don't want to become a member, there are several other ways that you can show your support. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue with the channel. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something amazing.